Welcome to yet another edition of DXB Today. Thanks so much, Dee, for tuning in over the next 60 minutes. Uh, we are going to be, well, diving a little bit deeper into the world of AI and generative AI. Just how much of an impact is it having on your life, on our lives, on our future? We'll find out all the details, and here's what's coming up. Khaled went down to the renowned Madame Tussauds Dubai to get a closer look at visiting Dua Lipa wax figurine alongside other global icons. Plus, we've got jazz artist Nick Pritchard joining us live in the studio. So, what's going on, Tom, Ash? Good to see you guys. There's so much happening in the region and generally in Dubai as well, specifically with esports and loads of things going on with the weather, but... <laughs> <laughs> esports and weather. <laughs> Indeed. Well, but that's the thing. If there's bad weather, you just stay in and play games, right? Absolutely. I don't consider <laughs> myself a big gamer, but of course, there's this huge 17-day event taking place. This is the third edition, and there's going to be so many fun, exciting things for gamers out there. In general, the whole global gaming industry has surpassed over $180 billion just in 2021, and a huge portion of that comes from esports and especially with the new things like virtual reality and augmented reality it has become such an immersive experience that this industry is taken off like a storm no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> i think we need to stop with the with the weather references <laughs> yeah it's certainly the huge amount of investment and initiatives my financial investment but also investments into the uh, the world of esports has seen this part of the world not just Dubai but the, this region become a hub for esports uh, and with that you're right to say yeah um, about the investment into AI and generative AI and that's basically what this show is going to be about because there ain't a single industry out there at the moment that ain't affected by AI already. There are a whole host of myths as well, uh, many of which need to be dispelled. There's a whole area of sort of fear around AI and its influence. Uh, it's good to see Dubai, the UAE, the MENA region embracing it. I'm looking forward to catching up with our guests throughout the course of the next 60 minutes to address a few of those issues. Exactly. I'm glad you said that, Tom, because our guest co-host today is going to educate us on all things AI. So let's find out who he is. Hello, everyone. I'm Karim Sarkis, Management Consulting Partner at Strategy Ant, and I can't wait to see you in the studio. Indeed, Karim will be joining us right here in the studio on this sofa in just a little bit. But first, our very own Khaled went down to Madame Tussauds, Dubai, located at the Blue Waters Island, to check out their latest wax visitor, Abu Butchers. Hey everybody, we are at Madame Tussauds on Blue Waters, Dubai. They have the latest addition to their collection. Let's go and check it out. I'm here with Chelsea. She's the studio manager who takes care of all the wax figures. Chelsea, it's a pleasure having you here with us. Tell us the amazing work that you do here. So I've actually been with the company Madame Tussauds for 12 years, so looking after the figures all that time, and that's made me travel around the world. Looking after the wax figures, making sure they look amazing every day, and a real highlight of my job is actually meeting with the celebrities and measuring them from head to toe. That's actually the start of the process, and we gather all that information um, around the world so we can fly to them, they fly to us, now, has there any been celebrities you might find difficult not to work with, but actually to make? Yes, so that's a great question because each figure is completely different, whether it's their hairstyle, whether it's the costume. So as you can see from Dwayne Johnson, some close-up details that we've paid particular attention to are his eyes and his teeth, uh, which we do for all the figures, but especially for Dwayne because that really brings him to life. When we talk about, of course, wax, we always think about Dubai, the heat, do they melt? We do actually have to keep everything temperature controlled. So I'm sure you can feel in here it's nice and cool. Um, and so that's obviously a conscious decision. We want to keep them all at nice temperature. We say around 19 degrees and they're perfect that way. That sounds very interesting. And tell us about today. Is there anything particular that we might see that is new? So very exciting. We have just launched Dua Lipa for a limited time only from Madame Tussauds Amsterdam. And what's really special about her is we've recreated an outfit that she wore for the 2018 Billboard Awards when she was uh, releasing her new song, New Rules, which was really cool. She's got this lovely purple-inspired makeup. And a fun fact, we never actually use makeup on the figures. It's all oil paints. 
And for the, to paint the head, it takes around um, one week and the body is five weeks as well. Individually inserted every hair one by one um, and we can cut and style it just like we do our own hair. I had a fabulous time at Madame Tussauds where I got to rub shoulders with celebrities and people you might see from all over the world. But for this short, limited time, Dua Lipa is in town. So come and meet her yourselves at Madame Tussauds. Yeah, it's a great collection. Get yourself down to Blue Waters Island, uh, just opposite JBR, to uh, check out the latest collection and say hi to Dua Lipa. Now, on with the show, and our co-host today is a thought leader helping navigate the uh, tremendous growth in the media industry through his extensive expertise and strategic vision. It's a warm welcome to the show from Strachey and Middle East, Kareem Sarkis. Uh, so Kareem, always good to catch up with you. Thanks so much indeed. No question. We are going to nail AI, all right? Over the course of the next 60 minutes, there might be all uh, those question marks around it, but thanks to your help and our other guests, we are going to try and get a better understanding of it and how it's affecting our life. I suppose the first question I have to ask is, is a robot gonna steal my job anytime soon? <laughs> that you started with the hardest question. <laughs> Look, with, like, with every new technology, uh, with every new technology, there's going to be this fear. Right? And if you look back and see when, when cars were introduced, the people who were taking care of the horses were out of a job. Yeah. The difference now is that, is that what's happening with AI is changing so fast and coming in so quickly that maybe people need, need to adapt much faster. Mm. And that's really the trick. And also governments need to adapt faster. So th the convention, really the answer, nobody knows. Yeah. The conventional wisdom right now is this phases. Phase one is where AI is your helper, is your assistant. It makes you, like, whatever you do, you do it on steroids, and you're much better at it. And if you learn to how to use the AI tools, then you're going to be much better than everyone else. Mm. And so the, you, you'll hear this a lot. They'll say the person with AI is going to replace the person who's, who doesn't know how to use AI. Yeah. So that's the first phase. So early adoption is good. Absolutely. Okay. This kind of reminds me of when we were introduced to computers and when we all started having computers at home, there was this fear that it's going to replace us and take away our jobs. It kind of reminds me of that time. I want to know a little bit more about some real world examples of how AI has created something. It could be a music or, I don't know, written a script or anything. So one thing to, to point out when we talk about AI creating, there's always a human so far so far, there's always a human who's telling it what to create. The actual process of creation, it then creates it itself. But again, that doesn't come from scratch. That comes from it learning from everything that has been fed. It's basically been fed the internet. These new models that we're talking about have been fed everything that's been on the internet. So they're learning from past human work. They're picking up map patterns. They don't understand. This AI does not un understand what it's creating. It doesn't know. It's just working entirely on mathematical probability. So that's to demyst demystify a yeah. little bit. It's not magic. It's really numbers at the end and probabilities. The more it has to, it learns, the better the results look. So if we, let's keep that in mind. But then having said that, today you can just with a text prompt, tell AI to create a song. So there was somebody, for example, who took all the catalog of Beatles songs, fed it into an AI, and it created an entirely new Beatles song that sounded like the Beatles, that had the voices of the Beatles. Uh, we had uh, a similar, somebody in, um, in China was a news anchor in sports, and he wanted to basically cover these tournaments that were happening around the world while he was sleeping. So he created a version of himself that automatically read the results that come coming in on the news feeds and presented them in his likeness, in his voice. Is that example? You just answered my yeah. original right. question. Right. You know? But he did it. Mate. But that's oh, the so thing, he, he did it. it. Right. So he did it, so he's now more valuable because not only does he do what he does when he's awake, he's getting he, more sleep. He, he, can, he can continue working 24-7. <laughs> but yeah, I like what you said though, is with that so far, <laughs> so we far. still need it so far. Um, but I would love to know a little bit more, Kareem, about uh, generative AI and when it comes to deep fakes as well. Like, like what's the situation with that? And okay, so this is the dangerous side of AI. If you like Today, we have to go in with a scenario where we need to assume that nothing we're seeing or hearing or reading is real. Because I can take your image, I can take your voice, I can make you be talking to somebody else, I can make you be getting into a place, out of a place, doing whatever I want, basically. And, and the, today you can spot a little bit when, when that's being manufactured or generated by AI, but in a few months or maybe a year, you won't be able to spot it. And so we really need, it's about awareness, it's about understanding that from now on, nothing is as it seems. Mm. 
but to, but to the trained eye, like I was watching something the other day and I could automatically spot, oh, that's green screen. Today, oh, like, yeah. Today, Link, you can yeah. spot it today, but if you look at what AI, so there's this famous video of uh, Will Smith trying to eat spaghetti, mm -hmm. that's AI generated, and you go back like 18 months back and he had like 15 fingers and the arms were not moving in the right way and whatever, and now it's getting to the point where it's Will Smith eating spaghetti. <laughs> there's still a bit of deformation in the hands, but in, in 12 months time, Nobody knows how good this is going to be. So you, won't, you will not be able, there's people working on AI algorithms to actually detect AI content. But even OpenAI themselves who created one for then pulled it back because it wasn't accurate enough. What do you say according to the, to, to the doubters out there? Because you know we often discover, describe this as the fourth industrial revolution. I'm always a little bit reluctant to use the word industrial when we're talking about something that is more digital than digital almost. So it's going to a, a whole new gig era. But what do you say to the naysayers, though that those that are out there that say, yeah, but my industry is not affected by it, I'm personally not affected by it. Are we all, is anyone immune to AI? So immune makes it sound like it's, very, it's going to be an infection. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not an infection. Look at it positively. We will all be affected yeah. by AI, yeah. whether as consumers or as creators or as business people or government officials and so on. Everybody needs to be aware of what it is, what it can do, how they can use it and how it can be used in, in, in places that affect them. Yeah. And so, yes, we will all be affected by it. There's always a trend in technology to exaggerate its impact when it's first introduced, but then uh, sort of not guess, not guess how important it's going to be down the line. And we're in that phase of AI. There's the initial hype on Gen AI, by the way. We need to also differentiate on this. So this is the, the recent flavor of AI, let's say. Okay. So right now everybody's hype, it's going to take my job, tomorrow it's going to be robots running everything. That's not going to happen yeah. tomorrow. Right? Uh, take self-driving cars that we've been talking about, where are they? they? They sort of slowly making their way yeah. into reality. AI is going to be a bit like this. We've had this phase, now we have a phase where, okay, where's the value created? How can we actually use it? Uh, the EU is putting a lot of regulations around how you can use it to try to make sure that it's being used in a way that doesn't harm society. But you really need to be learning about it and you need to tinkering with the tools. And it's very easy to get into. That's yeah. the whole point. It's accessible. You, it's basically just today text. You don't need to have any special expertise to, learn, to interact with it and, and understand its capabilities. Fantastic. Karim, please stick with us. There's so much more that we want to learn and understand from you about AI. It's time now for a quick break. But when we come back, we find out how music composers are collaborating with AI for better efficiency with the founder of Audio Swim. So stay with us.